you want to break into tech because you know data is where it's at and so you go online and you start going on youtube and then boom you're hit with a day in the life as a data analyst a day in the life as a data engineer or a software engineer a day in the life as a data scientist and you're probably like wait so now you're like wait which one do i choose what makes them different and where do i even start if i decide i want to be a data engineer or a data analyst or maybe even a data scientist and that's what we're going to talk about today hey guys i'm mika and as you guys already know my best friend's husband is the one that told me about data analytics and so when he told me about data it was just like data analytics this data analytics that and da 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 and he was just telling me all the things that i needed to know about data analytics so when things got tough and i decided to join a boot camp and learn about data analytics it wasn't until I got into the field when I learned that there were other roles such as a data engineer and a data scientist. And so I later on found out that I was really, I feel more comfortable and I feel like my personality really matches me being a data engineer than being a data analyst. And I felt like if I had known that first, then I could have basically went the route of a data engineer. So my thing is in, in this video, I'm here to break down the three roles so that way you can decide which role best fits you so that way you know which path you need to take. Before you sign up for that boot camp, before you order that book, figure out which role is best for you and so that way you can start working towards that now so that way you're not wasting no time nor money. So let's get into it. So let's break down these roles. Data analyst. I'm going to start with the data analyst because that is currently what I am. This is where most people start because this is also where I started. So you're answering questions with data, things like why are sales down this quarter or which products are selling the best. So you're pulling data from SQL and then you're analyzing it with either Excel or Python. But being a data analyst, more it's going to, it's going to be more Excel. And then you're basically making that data visual by using Power BI, Tableau, or even Click. After you make your visuals, then you also have to present your findings to help the business line make decisions. Your data engineer. So your data engineer is more of what I really what what I really prefer. Your data engineer is going to be like your back end developers, okay? So if you've ever heard that term front end and back end, your data engineer is going to be your back end developer. The engineer is the one that actually sets the stage for the analyst. You're working with pipelines, ETL jobs, tools like Airflow, Snowflake, or Databricks, and doing, like I said, more of a back end logic. Okay, so it is going to be a lot of coding as well. The coding is very heavy here. So let me help you explain this. Well, think of it like plumbing. Your data engineer is the one that creates the pipes for the water to flow through. So that way, once the pipe is developed or created, the water can actually flow through for the data analyst to use the water. So the engineer is the person who creates the pipes. I hope that made sense. <laughs> then you have your data scientists. Now, I've had people come to me and say, Mika, how much statistics or math do I have to have in order to be a data analyst? Because I'm not good at statistics and things like that. And I keep telling people over and over, we don't do a lot of statistics in data analytics. That's not really us. OK, um, we don't really do a whole lot of math. If we do, we allow our, um, our our visualization tools to do that for we use Power BI. We use our tools or our decks to actually do our calculations for us. So but statistics, that's not us. That is going to be more of your data scientists. Your data scientist is the person who gets into machine learning. They're doing a lot of predictions, a lot of hypotheses, and they're very heavy with math. It's very statistic driven. They're answering questions like, can I predict the churn? Or where do I see this company being in the next five years based on this? That kind of thing. So that's pretty much what your data scientist does. Um, it's very math heavy and it often requires a deeper understanding of Python, a deeper understanding of Python libraries. And sometimes it may sometimes may even require a master's degree or maybe at least a bachelor's degree. OK, so you're still not sure you're still confused. OK, OK, no worries. So let me break it down a little bit more for you. Let me try to get it down to a little bit more plain English for you. 
Okay. Do you like making decisions based on data? Like if data is given to you, do you like looking at the data and being able to determine what the KPIs are and being able to make decisions? Do you like collaborating with stakeholders and, and training? Do you like creating dashboards and making things visual and things like that? If so, then you are an analyst. You are a data analyst. That's going to be more your vibe. Are you the person who prefers to work behind the scenes? Don't really want to talk a whole lot. Uh, you prefer to to work under the hood, shall we say. Are you the person who loves AI and automations and building systems and things like that, like I do? Then my love, you are, your vibe is gonna be more of a data engineer. Does math excite you? Because it don't excite me, but do it excite you? Does math excite you? Do you like testing ideas? Do you like working with predictions and coming up with predictions? Then if so, then your vibe is more of a data scientist. They all do work together, by the way. But it's not about which one is better. It's about which one actually fits you best. So let's talk real for a second. Now, you guys have seen my other videos where I have talked about um, salaries for data analysts. But this time, I'm going to tell you about the salary ranges for the data analyst, a data engineer, and also for the scientists, okay? Now, the, the salary ranges that I'm going to give you, I've always told you that it's all about location, 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 the industry, and then basically your skills, right? But the salaries that I'm going to give you today, based on regardless where you are, you're going to fall in between that, um, regardless the industry and regardless your skills. A data analyst can make starting out is making sixty-five to eighty-five thousand dollars a year. Now you can go up to six figures if you become like a senior analyst or maybe even a manager. But it is a great way to get your foot in the door if you want to pivot, which we'll talk about here soon. You have next is going to be your data engineer. Your data engineer makes between 85 to 110. Again, you can make less than that or you can make more. Now, if you have AI or automation or cloud experience, honey, that is six figure territory right there. Start now. Then you have your data scientists. So your data scientists, this varies okay the range i'm about to give you is going to be for an entry level data scientist so an entry level role data scientist can make 95 to 120. i have seen some data scientists make up to 200 220 and on and, and above right because data scientists get paid a lot of money but please please remember that if some of these positions is going to require you to have either a master's degree or a bachelor's degree degree depending on the company and if you don't have that then you better have a real good solid portfolio <laughs> The good thing is, is that you don't have to have this all figured out today, okay? So you probably saying, well, I would love to be a data scientist, but I don't think I'm ready to be a data scientist. Even though that's really where my heart is, you can always pivot. So that means that you can be a data analyst and pivot to becoming a data engineer or moving up to becoming a data scientist. You could be a data engineer and then pivot and move your way up to becoming a data scientist. But what you don't do is become a data scientist and then pivot to a data analyst because not to talk down on us data analysts, but becoming a data scientist and then becoming, then moving down, um, moving to a data analyst, you're actually downgrading. So you're probably saying, well, Mika, now that I figured out, or maybe I have an idea of what I want to do, how do I, like, I don't even know where I need to start because there's so much information online, on YouTube. I don't really know where to start. Where do I start? All right. Step one, start with SQL. And again, I'm probably going to get some, I'm going to get some kickback on that. Not every data analyst requires you to have Python. Not every data engineer requires you to have Python, right? But... Though all three positions, whether you're a data analyst, whether you're a data engineer, or whether you're a data scientist, you have to have SQL. So I'm going to tell you, start with SQL. Once you learn SQL and then you want to learn Python, that's what I suggest. I suggest you learn SQL first and then try to learn Python. Step two, once you do SQL, then I want you to basically do three little mini projects, okay? For an analyst, we ain't trying to solve problems. We ain't working on no case studies. I just want you to just build a real basic, simple dashboard. That's it. 
So try to configure you an ETL package or create you an ETL, um, uh, create you an ETL script within Python and see how that works for you. And I want you to try that with engineers. And then for the data scientist part, I want you to to take some raw data and you can go online. There is some um, free data sets that you can use online. Try to use that and then try to figure out predictions. Okay. So I want you to try all three of those. Once you do that, ask yourself. Which one did you really enjoy doing? Did you really enjoy creating that dashboard? Can you see yourself doing that in the next five years, 10 years from now? Or the ETL systems that you created, like either the script or the ETL um, package that you created within SSIS. Did you enjoy that? Like I love configuring ETL packages. So did you enjoy that? Can you see yourself doing that in the next five years, 10 years, 20 years? Or can you see yourself doing predictions, working with predictions and statistics and things? Can you see yourself doing that? Ask yourself that you enjoy, which one did you enjoyed the most? And then which one that frustrated the heck out of you? Which one were you saying, nah, uh-uh, this ain't it. So figure out now which one frustrated you, which one that you really enjoy, and which one frustrated you, and then that's going to be your clue. Sometimes, like me, I'm a kind of person who loves to write things down, or I need to see it visually. Like, you're telling me all this stuff, Mika, but I kind of, like, need to see it, right? I need to, like, see it on paper or whatever. Don't worry about it. I got something for you. Down in the description box below, I actually have a free quiz just click on the quiz. It's going to be like a seven little question. I want you to give your honest answer because again, it's going to help you to decide which one, which role is actually best for you. Okay. So that's going to be the quiz. Um, so I want you to take the quiz. Now the quiz is not going to predict your destiny. Okay. It's not your horoscope. Okay. It is going to tell you based on the answers you gave, it's going to spit out and say, okay, based on the answers you gave, you, you are probably going to enjoy being an analyst or you're probably going to enjoy being an engineer. Okay. So it's going to be more of that. Even though I may say, well, I'm really good at being a data analyst. But once I took the quiz myself, I realized that I am more of a data engineer. So tell me in the comment, which role are you leaning towards? But then after you took the quiz, which one did it tell you that you should be? And then after you take the quiz, if you want to go deeper and talk about how to create a roadmap and how to dive deeper and get a better understanding and everything that you need to know and have exercises and all that, there's also a workbook that you can actually get in the, that is a digital product that you can actually get um, from my stand store as well. All right. So in the next video that we have coming out next week, it is going to be titled how long does it really take to get good at SQL? That is going to be my next video that's going to drop next week. Now, I am not saying that you're going to master it and the show ain't going to be overnight. It is not going to be a video, learn SQL in 30 minutes. No, mm -mm. no, that ain't that kind of video because I do specialize it. So because I do specialize it, I'm going to tell you everything that I did, the tips and tricks that I did um, to help me get good at SQL. So I really hope you guys stay tuned for that. Um, that video will drop next week. And so, um, so again, don't forget, take the quiz get the workbook and work it out and if you like this video give it a thumbs up don't forget to like comment and subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video bye